Let me make sure that I'm in the right settings. Sorry. Yeah, that's the right one. All right, guys, so it should say standard versus itemized deductions. We're going to break this down into understandable pieces. You guys should have three papers on your desk. Um, I don't have a ton of glue sticks, but I have some. We're going to try to make sure that every table gets at least one glue stick. You got one? Nolan, can you catch? Hector, can you catch? <laughs> Nathaniel, can you catch? Richard, can you catch? Okay, I'm trying to make sure that there's at least one glue stick at every table. <laughs> Let's be nice. Okay. Does everybody have this title in there? Okay. No. Standard versus itemized deductions. I'm going to go ahead and turn to page. For me, I'm on page 25. All right, you guys. Do you see this paper? Okay, see how there's a blank on one side? Yeah. You're gonna fold it in half so that blank is where we're gonna glue it to the book. So we're gonna fold it in half so it makes a little book. And it's gonna open up with the examples on the inside, okay? So we're just gonna glue this down. I add a lot of glue. I glue it up so it doesn't come out. So just don't glue your book shut and you're good to go. Hey, Caesar, can you catch? Your table has the most people. Can you guys... We're going to go through this together, but at the very top, in case it falls out, would you put your name so that if it falls out, we can get it back to you? And I put a one for period. Oh, sorry. You guys are three. Period three. We're going to go through this part together. We're going to get the other stuff. Okay. Now, guys, these ones, we're going to be using these. Go ahead. You good? All right, guys. We're going to be using these, these charts, and we will glue them in, but right now it's easier if they're not glued in. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's start with a couple of things we should know. Um, does anybody remember what gross income is? Yeah, it's your total how much you make. Yep, yeah. this is your total income. So it's not your take-home pay. What's our take-home pay called? Net. Right? net, your net income, yes. Does anybody know what a standard deduction is? <laughs> kind of, yeah. If you guys look here, do you see your filing status? Do you see where it says standard deduction? This is how much they give you to be able to take off of your net income, sorry, your gross income before they charge you any taxes. So they assume if you're single, yes, sir. They assume if you're single, how much money do you get to take off automatically? Okay, what if you're married and filing jointly? Hey, guys, how are those related? Double. It's basically double, right? What about married filing separately? Same as single. What about head of household? So how much more do you get for having kids? How much more of a tax deduction do you get? 
Yep. Uh, about 6000 right? Do you guys see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you think a kid costs more or less than 6000 a year? More. Significantly more. <clears throat> okay? So the standard deduction, did you have to do any math to find that? They just give it to you, right? So right here for standard deduction, this is just a set amount. From the IRS. Do you guys remember what an IRS is? You need one of each one? One, two, three? Money. Internal Revenue, Revenue Service, basically taxes. They're the ones in charge of taxes. Itemized deductions is where you have to claim each one. And you have to have proof. And my handwriting is getting worse. That's prof. Let me try again. That's right. You, you have to claim each kind and have proof. So this is like you have to have receipts. Okay. If you're done with your warm-up, would you just close your computer so I can tell you're worth me and you're not working on something else? Okay. All right, guys. So now we're going to go through each, each one. Now there are literally hundreds of types of deductions you could do, but we're just going to go over the most common ones. So for student loans, you can take up to 2,500, but only for interest. Wesley, are you with us? No. Can you join us? Wesley, is your computer open? Yeah. Can you close it and join us? Interest paid. Interest paid. So you only get to deduct it for interest. So if I have a $10,000 loan and I only paid $200 on it, uh, $200 in interest, I don't get to take off the rest of the money that I paid that year, only the part that went towards interest. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. For state and local taxes, the maximum is $10,000. So a $10,000 deduction. It can be a combination of property taxes with one of these two options. So either your state and local income tax or sales tax. You can't do all three together. So you can't do income and sales tax together, or uh, you can't do those two together. We can do, oh, I said proper. I'm sorry, property. This is supposed to be property. You can tell I was tired while doing this, and I'm sorry. Property taxes. Who pays property taxes? Okay, do renters in apartment complexes pay, pay property taxes? No. So I own a house. Do I pay property taxes? Yes. yes, I do. Does anyone, my house costs approximately $150,000. Does anybody have a clue how much I pay in property taxes each year? I was surprised when I found out. Take a wild guess. Three thousand. Seven. They kicked me out of class. They told me to come in here. What's going on, sweetie? Who, who kicked you out? 12000 $7. Seven thousand is pretty close. It's a little over six thousand. Yeah, it's 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 a little under seven thousand. It's six thousand eight hundred and something another. Yeah, good or bad? Um, it's well, I don't want to pay six thousand something another dollars. Yeah, that's on top of mortgage too, right? Uh, on top of your mortgage. Oh. Yep. <laughs> well, there's a lot. Okay. Maximum. Um, why did I put maximum deductions? I have a thought there. Oh, I meant to put 10,000 here. I'm sorry. Okay, you guys. Charitable donations, you can do up... To, does anybody have an example of a charitable donation? What would be... Would it count as charity if I give someone on the street five bucks? No, no, no. What makes it a qualified charitable contribution? 
Okay, it could be a charity. Does anybody go to church? Yes. Pretty much every church you can pay money to, and that's charity. Does anybody ever donate to Goodwill or any place like that? Yep. You can get an itemized tax deduction for that. When you own a house, like I own a house right now, I'm doing some remodeling work, and I have, I'm have, i taking out things that I don't want anymore. I can give those to Habitat for Humanity, and I can get tax credits there. Does that make sense? So take a guess on what percentage of your income you can get charitable donations to take that much of your income off of taxes. 90 is too much, 3 is too small, a little bit less, less than 80, more than 50. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I can't write today. Okay, you guys, does it make sense? Sorry, adjusted gross income. Does it make sense why? I got to zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing from side to side. Does it make sense why billionaires and people with who make a lot of money would donate a lot to charity. I'm sorry, my handwriting's bad. Let me scratch that out a little bit more. It's 60% of adjusted gross income. So they can donate up to, so if they make 100,000, they could donate 60,000 for charity, and then they would only pay taxes on the 40,000 they have left. So you can, you can, if I donate all of my income, I still have to pay taxes on at least 40%. If you have $100, you have to pay taxes on the $100. Okay, let's pretend that the tax is $1 for the $100. It's more like $20, but... Okay, are you with me? Okay, now that, that $20 you're going to have to pay in taxes, you don't want to pay that much, and you have more money than you need. So you donate 60 of your $100 to, ta to, to some cause you appreciate now. How many dollars do you have left? Not much. Not much. We think that all seniors should attend the cafeteria for just a few minutes. All seniors. Seniors. Seniors, give that shot. Bye, Miss. See you tomorrow. All right, guys. So for medical expenses, any idea how much you can, um, we did? 200000 Whoa. It's actually based on your income. Uh, 3000 A percentage. Welcome back. Okay, so you only need to do, you can get up to 7.5, and again, it's of your adjusted gross income. So that's the most you can do, and you can't be on reimbursed things. It has to be unimbursed. She was right. It didn't take long. All right. Does anybody ever plan on owning their own business? Okay. Nice. So for self-employment, there's a lot of things you can break down. Let me just do a quick Google because I have a, a list. Unreimbursed, which means they can't have paid you back. All right, if you're self-employed, there's a lot of things that you could deduct. So, for example, where are you going to work out of? Garage. Possibly. So you could do home office. So if you have a home office space, that's usually ta you can get a tax deduction for that. Um. You're typically going to need a phone and internet for this. So you can usually do phone. 
phone and internet. Um, if you're taking clou uh, clowns, clients. Um, we're clowns. Um, if you're taking clients out for food or something like that, if it's a work-related uh, meal, you can do meals. I'm going to say client meals. So, like, if you go to a restaurant with them, if you have to travel for work, so if you have to drive somewhere, all those miles and everything, travel expenses are deductible. Pardon? I don't know what you're saying. So, not only am I paying for the meal. Yes. Not only am I paying them for work, I have to pay for their food. No, we're talking about... So... So, like, when you're making a business deal, this will happen a lot, is you go out to lunch to discuss it. Oh, yeah. You pick up the tab, and then you can write that off on your taxes because it's a business expense. Okay? Um, I don't have any more room. Like, if I try to write more, it's going to be too much. Hey, guys, please listen. Please listen. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to tell – please stop talking, Haley. I'm going to give you, like, five other things that it could be. Um, so travel's like driving. If you have a car that you're using for business, so if you need to drive a truck that's specifically for that business, that's deductible. If you are um, paying interest on a loan or anything like that, that's for your business, the interest is deductible. If you need to print business cards, handouts, flyers, anything like that, you had to print that's materials for that, that's deductible. If you have to go to school or education or anything to stay certified and to stay in your field, the cost of that is deductible. Does that make sense? There's like a lot more, but we don't have any more space. So let's move on. What's a mortgage? When you pay for your house. Do you think I get to deduct my mortgage payments? No, but what do you think I get to deduct? Just the interest, what do you think the most is that the house is allowed to be, the, the most principal I'm allowed to deduct? If I have a $10 million house, do you think they're going to let me deduct my interest? No. No. What do you think is the most expensive house that they'll let you deduct interest for? $150,000. 750000 I can because it's smaller. So the reason that this exists is for places like New York and California where houses are crazy expensive for small things. The idea behind this is if you're a normal American, your average person, you're going to be paying a lot in interest. So over the life of my loan, if I actually paid my loan um, how they have it set up, then I think I'm paying like 80 grand in interest over the life of the 30 years. Okay, so they let you deduct just the interest on that. How much do you think educators spend on their classroom every year? Give me an idea of what you think. Uh, average educator spends somewhere between six, $600 and $1,000 on their all their supplies and everything they use that year. Guess how much we get a write-off? $50. It's a little better than that. We're going to take 250 I don't get it back, which is why we're like, put it away nicely. Stop breaking my stuff. Okay, you guys good? All right. Now, we haven't glued in these papers yet because we're going to be using these. So once you have this, go ahead and open it up. We're going to open up the inside of this, and we're going to go through some of these practice problems together. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm planning on doing a quiz next time I see you with similar questions, different numbers, and some of the other stuff on taxes, and then we're going to be starting on learning how to invest. Okay? So let's start with this. What's their, um, what's their gross income, you guys? Yep. Okay? Now, for me, it's easiest for me to just write down my work. Okay, we're going to start with that. So, what's their filing status? They're 24 single. So, are they single, married, married, or head of household? Single. So, what's their standard deduction? 
That 12,550, we're going to put that right here. You guys with me? And now we're going to take these itemized and see if we can add these up at all, okay? 900 dollars of unimbursed dental expenses. Is he allowed to claim that? No. What's the most he can claim for medical? Medical, what's the most he can do? Okay, so let's find out what 7.5 percent of 47,000 is. So you're going to just use a calculator. 47,000 times, what am I going to multiply it by? 7.5 mm, is not the right thing. What do I multiply it by? Remember, move the decimal. 0 .075. 0 .075. So he could, so can he, sorry, can he take the $900? Because it's less than that, right? So he can take it. So we're going to say $900, okay? Sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred and fifty in sales tax. Is he allowed to do that? Okay. Condo for this much in mortgage interest. So nine thousand dollars in mortgage interest. Is he allowed to claim that? Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Let's go back to the mortgage interest situation. Uh, he used to do the interest, any interest he paid on his mortgage, as long as the principal was under this amount. So, did he spend more than $750,000 on his mortgage? Mm, no. So, we're going to take that as well. Ah, and student loan interest. What's the maximum on student loan interest he's allowed to take off? 2000? 2000? Yep, 2500. So he also gets to do that. What's the interest? It was I under 47,000? Itemized. Itemized. Okay, so we've got all of those. Ah, and he did 1500 in cash donations to charity. Is he allowed to do that? No. Yes. Actually, it is. It's allowed as long as he gets a receipt. Okay, because it's actually considered a cash donation if I donate money with a check or a Visa card or digitally. Okay, so that's a lot of things, right? Okay, guys, now you're going to just add those up. Let's find out what that is. Go ahead and grab a calculator. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it too. Add all these together, not the 47, just all these. What'd you get? I got something different. I got 14,636. That's what I got too. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you guys, which one's going to be better? Which one saves you more money? Nope. Because this is what you're going to subtract from your gross to find out your taxable. So which one lets you take away more? The itemized. The itemized lets you take away more. So your taxable income is going to be gross minus whatever deduction you're taking. So in this case, itemized bigger. We want to subtract more because we want to pay less. Is it helpful that we're doing this together? Yes. Oh, you guys, tell me what you get for taxable income. You're going to subtract these two numbers. Wait, 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 wait. 
We should push around the uh, iPad. I just left it at 30. Is that is that wrong? Yeah, I had 34. 34? Okay. I believe you. Although I just put a hole in my paper trying to write it. I can't write a four. I'm sorry. I have a hole in the paper now. Thirty-four. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Am I? I didn't get the thirty-four. I know. I see the four here, but I don't. Look, I have it on my calculator, and I it should be a four. You're right, but I'm wondering why it's not showing. Me. I'm wondering why. Does that make sense? With me? Mm, no, I think it's in my purse. Do I have any mints with me? I don't. I'm sorry. All I got is a uh, uh, cough drop. It's not really a nice flavor. Yeah. It's lemon honey. <laughs> Okay, Shh. I'm going to make this four. Shh. Okay, you guys, what did you guys get here? For their taxable income. Mm -hmm. Sixty-six? Okay, my calculator is rounding wrong and it's ticking me off. I got to figure out what the settings are and how to change it. Okay, you guys, are you with me so far? Now we've got to figure out how much tax is due. So we're going to grab this guy here. Which one are we looking for? Are we looking at married, head of household, trust, married, filed separately, or individual? individual? See how it's kind of annoying that they change their language from single to individual? Yep. Welcome to the government. <laughs> Welcome to working with your government. Can you see why people get ticked off about taxes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we're here, and then that means here. So we're gonna do taxes due is gonna be. I'm gonna start over here because we're gonna need we're gonna need some space. It's gonna be nine hundred ninety five dollars plus point one two. Why am I doing point one two? Why am I not just doing twelve, guys? Exactly. Okay. Then we're going to take this number, subtract, see how it's the amount over 995? So we're going to take this number, 32363.66 minus 9950. And that's going to give us how much tax is due. Now, my calculator is rounding wrong. I'm still going to try it. I'm going to see if I can figure out real quick how to make it stop rounding. Yeah, please do that. I need Wolfram Alpha. In case you care, Wolfram Alpha is the site I go to when I need something calculated and I don't have a calculator on me. All right, guys, what did you get? What did you guys get? How much tax do they owe? I don't know. I couldn't do it on my phone. Uh, I'm not sure if it's right, but I got 3,680. Yep. Three thousand six hundred and eighty-four dollars sixty-three ninety-two. dollars Which, honestly, you could stop it right here. I didn't, you don't need to write that much. I just used Wolfram and it gives you everything. You guys there? All right. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. Lots of steps in there, right? <clears throat> this is it. I mean, if you want to put it there, you can, but. 
Okay, now I want to point out something. If you do standardized deductions, you don't have to have any paperwork to prove that you can claim that. If you do itemized deductions, I have to have the paperwork to show the $900 of un unreimbursed expenses, this, this, and this. I have to have, if I spent that much on sales tax, I have to have the receipts for all that crap. You understand? Yes. Okay, so which one's less work? Standardized. Which one can save you more money of potentially? Uh, itemized. Itemized. You follow me? Yeah. So which one's better? Depends on how much money you spend and what's going on. If you bought a house or a car, you spent a lot of money on sales tax that year, so it's almost always better to do itemized. When I bought my house, it was over $5,000 in sales tax. Isn't that crazy? All right, guys, let's try another one. Julian. Okay, first of all, what's... what Single, perfect. What's the, what's the standard deduction? What's the standard deduction for them? On a test question, could you figure out the standard deduction given a set of circumstances? What? If I give you a story problem, can you tell me the standard deduction for that person? If it's single, yeah, I'll still have the other one. If I told you they were married? Uh, yeah. If they're married, you're just going to assume they're filing jointly unless I give you a reason. I'd have to tell you if they're filing separately. What if I tell you they're a single mom? Which one would you pick? Yeah, what if it was a single dad? Boom. Wesley, can you close your computer and join us, please? Okay, you guys, so we're going to break this down again. It's very... Did I do the exact same thing? Yeah. Huh. I'm sorry. I, I copied the same one. I did not mean to do that. Can we just skip that and go to the next one? No. Okay, redo it yourself. I'll put it next one. I'm going to write it the same number. I'm just going to leave it. Okay, what about this one? Good. Okay. So let's write down 80000 in student loans. She borrowed this much in student loans and paid a total of this much with this much of interest. Which of those three numbers do we care about? Do we care how much her student loans were for? No, because no, she can't deduct that. Do we care how much she paid? No. We don't. We only care about how much, what she paid in interest. So this is the part we care about. Look how much she paid in interest and how much went towards the principal. That's bad. How much did she give to her church? Mm -hmm. Okay, and insurance premiums. Okay, so let's break this down. So let's start with, this is student loans. What's the max you can get in deductions for student loans? Did she pay more than that? Yes. So she only gets that 2500 in, in deductions. Okay? Do we care how much she to paid towards the principal? No. She doesn't get any deductions for that. This is how much her job is, so I'm going to just write that down as the gross. 46000 a year. And she gave 12% to her church. So what do we need to figure out? 12% of 46%. Exactly. How are we going to do that? Multiply. Multiply what? 47,000 times two. what? Good. Okay, so we're going to say church, which is also called charity. How much did she did she give to charity, y'all? Um, I've got 5,640. Did I put the wrong number? Oh, I put the wrong number in. I got five five two zero. Okay. How much did she pay in sales tax? Is there a limit on how much she can claim in sales tax? Up to ten thousand. So sales tax.
Okay, and then insurance. Yes, this is all itemized. So I'm just going to point out a couple of things. The second page I gave you has a list of tax credits that you get or tax deductions. There's a lot of stuff on there. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, insurance, I don't remember insurance. Insurance, student loans, maximum. Wait, can you find your tax deductions and stuff? You know what I do? I literally just use TurboTax. They ask me all the questions. I fill in all the stuff. It keeps all my documents for me. Easy. Really? Yeah, it does it all for me. TurboTax? Probably. Uh, TurboTax you can do for free, and I, I think I use the free version. I might have upgraded to, I think it was like 50 bucks last year, and I upgraded so that I could have them give me some tax breaks for buying a house. Okay, so what are you just going to add all those together? Yeah, not that good, right? Okay, you guys, so definitely standardized is better on that case, right? All right, so then what's going to be their taxable income? I'm going to take their 46000 that they make, and what am I going to take away? The Good. Which means what's their taxable income? Did I do it wrong? I got 452. You guys got it? Okay, now that we have this taxable income, I'm just going to write it here. Guys, I appreciate you rolling with this today. I was trying to get this printed out for you, but I should have I should have tried it out a little bit more and proofread it. But I just really thought if I had to make you write all this down, you would quit. I would have quit. So, and then how are we going to figure out our taxes due? I'm just going to draw a fat arrow from here down cuz I don't want to try to fit it right there. Yep. So it's going to be. Wait, no, because they were they made 26, right? They made uh, 30,000. We, uh, we only look at their taxable income. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the whole point of tax deductions. You know how I keep talking to you about the HSA? I liked it because it lowered my taxable income, and it, you can also invest it. I understand. It, well, phones aren't scientific calculators, so they don't always have the correct order of operations when you're trying to do a multi-step process. Okay, tell me what you guys get. Good. How do we feel about that, you guys? You guys got this? Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to take a picture of, I need a picture of all three parts. So one picture of the front, and then you can just do one picture that shows both sides of the inside. And you're going to upload that to today's assignment. And then there is a, um, some questions to do on Canvas.